Greetings viewers, my name is Peter and I'm a tech with Grin Technologies and through the course of my work here I am called upon to troubleshoot and repair batteries and this one's come to us for service so we figured we'd point a camera at me and record the process so that you can learn a few things about troubleshooting for yourself. So a little background, all I know about this is it was brought in by a customer that left it sitting over a long cold winter storage and they came to use it this spring and have no signs of life. So of course when we're thinking long-term storage, we're thinking over discharge, uh, but we don't know. Actually, we haven't opened this battery yet, so let's you and I figure out together what's going on. Before we actually get inside and take it apart, there's a few things we can check. Uh, most easily, we've got our voltmeter right on the front, and in this case, we have absolutely nothing from that. So let's move on to the discharge port and see what kind of voltage we have. Right, and we are looking at just better than 2.9 volts. So if that was actually the voltage of the battery, it would be a really bad day. Uh, but if you look, I expect that, yeah, as I cover the probes of my meter with my fingers, you can see how that voltage deflects down 2.915 and quickly recovers. Um, what that suggests to me is what we're looking at here isn't actually the battery voltage, but that's characteristic of a floating voltage you see when the BMS has opened and protected the battery from over discharge. If I were to measure these terminals and see precisely zero volts, that would suggest some sort of blown fuse or a problem with the, uh, the switch that you find on this style of battery. But since we have that transient floating voltage, I'm almost certain that once we open this up, we're gonna find a battery where the BMS has done exactly what it's supposed to do and uh, gone into over discharge protection. So the last screws are just coming out and I suppose it's as good a time as any dimension. Uh, be careful when you're taking apart lithium batteries. There's obviously exposed cell terminals inside and if you short out any two cells, uh, you can have a bad day. So I'm sure none of you are going to be so foolish as to open these batteries unless you have some good idea what you're doing. So, oh, there we go. Screws will all come jingle jangling out here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Set these aside. Looks like we've still got one item in there somewhere. There it is. There we go. Okay, there's our hardware. And... The big reveal, are we in frame for the big reveal? Huzzah, there's the battery. So, first things first, we want to get to the BMS. Uh, we want to confirm what the actual voltage is on the input of the BMS. Unfortunately, in this situation, oops, we are going to have to get underneath here. So let's see, you're gonna to have to cut some of this. Alright, so you can see here this heat sink obviously is the BMS. I'm going to see if I can unplug from this lower case structure here. There we are. So we're going to want to measure our actual battery voltage. The best way to do that is we're going to want to get to the sense lead connector. So we're going to need to cut some of this away. I don't know if we want to cut while we... Alright, kept on tape, released. Alright, so we've opened the battery and we've flipped it upside down so that we can access the sense lead header. Every BMS will have a ribbon connector essentially, a connector with many leads uh, that are sense leads that go straight to the heads of the cells themselves. And this is the quickest and easiest way to see each and every one of our individual cell voltages. So now uh, we're going to see whether we have healthy cells or we have unhealthy cells. So we're going to start on the negative most. Obviously, you want to be careful when you do this and leave the uh, double espresso for later. And we have, I, we've got bad news. We've got 0.26. We've got 0.26. Yep, so this is a bad day. This is the nature of reality television. Yep, sometimes, sometimes there's nothing to be done. And in this case, we have a tragedy in so much as this battery has sat long enough that the question draw of the BMS itself has actually pulled the cells well past the point of saving. Um, if they were below cutoff voltage, for example, if they were somewhere you know, less than 2.7 but still greater than 2 volts, or even 1.9, 1.8 volts, uh, you can trickle charge them, uh, restore the battery so that the overcharge lead will, will re-engage and allow normal charging. 
and you can get some useful life back in the pack. But in this case, at 0.26 volts per cell, this is unfortunately now a paperweight. Um, so say hypothetically that, uh, again, uh, I had cell voltages that were too low to allow for safe discharge, so we're you know, under 2.8, 2.7 volts, but still better than 1.7, 1.8 volts. That's a situation where we need to be careful not to drive very much charging current through the battery. Uh, we can do that either with a lab power supply, or better yet, with a cycle satiator, which I think we have here. Um, this is actually designed to automatically apply trickle charging currents when the battery is within a specified voltage range that you can customize for different profiles. Um, so if this battery were just a little healthier than it was, we could actually bypass the BMS and connect it to the satiator and trickle charge it. Uh, not going to work for us today. Another hypothetical uh, would be, say, we had healthy cell voltages on almost all the cells, but we had one or two or three cell groups that were outliers. Uh, say we've got three volts across the board until we get to our negative most cell group, which was completely flat, say. Uh, that would be a situation where if the battery is reasonably new, there's some logic to doing surgery where we would actually cut through the nickel strip that holds the cell groups together, break away the defective cell group, and spot weld in some fresh cells. Uh, we would then proceed to balance the battery, make sure that all the cell groups were in the same state of charge before reconnecting everything and uh, testing the battery. But that's not going to help us here either because what we have is a case of gross overdischarge. Um, the Quesian draw BMS means that a couple of months of storage, especially if you put the battery into storage in a low state of charge, can be the end of it. And this is a good lesson on the importance of keeping batteries well charged in storage. So I'm not sure there's too much else to go over with this example here. It's kind of not the best teaching tool, but I think we'll reconvene with some other batteries that have different and solvable problems, and uh, we'll reconvene then.